This episode is brought to you by CuriosityStream, a subscription streaming service that offers over 2,000 documentaries and nonfiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers. Sign up using the link and promo code below to start a 31-day free trial. This is Earth. As far as we know, it's the only place in the universe where complex life has evolved and has been able to thrive. Despite our best efforts, we've yet to see any solid evidence of life beyond our little blue planet. The likelihood that the entire universe is completely devoid of life is very slim, but given the unfathomable scale of the cosmos, it's likely that we would never cross paths with another sentient species. If our corner of the universe does turn out to be completely barren, do we have an obligation, or even the right, to seed life on other planets in the name of life itself? The answer may be more complicated than we think. Today, our space missions are required to abide by a practice known as planetary protection. Put simply, we have to be very careful not to contaminate planets or other celestial bodies with microbes from Earth, or vice versa. The idea of Genesis missions, that is, missions designed to seed planets with life, has been around for a very long time in science fiction. The notion that some advanced species could spark the evolution of life on distant worlds is a staple in many sci-fi books and movies, and has even been used as a possible explanation for the origin of life on Earth, though without any evidence. While many national space programs around the world are adamant that we should respect the natural development of planets in our solar system and not interfere in any way, there's less of a consensus on extrasolar planets, that is, planets beyond our solar system. There are several reasons for this. First, the main interest in keeping local planets uncontaminated is purely scientific. We want to be able to watch the natural development of life if it ever arises. This desire becomes less important the further from Earth we travel. For example, the nearest star system, Alpha Centauri, is 4.25 light years away. It would take us thousands of years just to get there using modern technology. So watching natural development of life from Earth is basically impossible. The second, more interesting argument for Genesis missions is that the universe is full of planets that we consider transiently habitable, which means they could support life, but have been and likely will remain barren unless simple life is introduced from somewhere else. Take an exoplanet with a reasonable climate and the presence of oxygen, for example. While this may sound like the ideal spot for life to develop, some studies suggest that the presence of primordial oxygen may actually be a barrier for the development of life. While it is critical for the existence of complex life forms as we know them, oxygen could well prove toxic for the simplest forms of life that would appear first. If those simple life forms couldn't survive, then there would be no chance for more advanced life to develop, unless the exoplanet underwent long and specific changes over billions of years, as Earth did. If there's no indigenous life to protect, and the odds of it developing are not good, then the practice of planetary protection doesn't really apply. The proposed solution would be to launch vessels equipped with biological factories or cryogenic pods which could deposit their contents on transiently habitable worlds, offering life a multi-million year shortcut. If we could seed an exoplanet with eukaryotes advanced enough to survive an oxygen-rich environment, the process of biological evolution should quickly take off, leading to its own Cambrian explosion and the development of complex life forms. By all accounts, it should be possible for us to seed exoplanets if we decided to do so. It would likely require extensive planning and utilization of cutting-edge propulsion technology, but it could be done. So the main question is not, can we do it, but should we? There are two main schools of thought. There are those who believe the natural order of things should not be tampered with, and that we humans have no right to introduce Earth life on other planets. And then there are those who believe that life has an obligation to further life, that we have the opportunity and therefore the moral responsibility to ensure that life doesn't go extinct in the universe. Both camps can make compelling arguments. On the one hand, who are we to assume that life is special enough to merit infecting other worlds with its presence? But on the other, it would seem strange if the few small flickers of life went out and left the universe entirely cold, dark, and empty. Is the purpose of advanced life to ensure that it continues? Or is life just a curious accident that has no say over the random development of the wide cosmos? It's as close to a moral predicament as we're likely to see in the fields of astronomy and biology, and it's a debate we'll likely have to face at some point in our future. What do you think? Are we the forerunners all the sci-fi novels talk about? Is it our responsibility to make sure that life continues for millions of years? Or are we just a blip, a chemical anomaly that should fade into the dark? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you liked this topic, I highly recommend you check out CuriosityStream. They have a ton of great content on astronomy and planetary exploration, like this one called Is Anybody Out There, which tackles the question of where we might find life in the universe. 
Curiosity Stream is a subscription streaming service that offers tons of great nonfiction content aimed at people on a lifelong quest to learn, explore, and understand. They've got over 2,000 documentaries from some of the best filmmakers in the game, and they've got a bunch of material on space exploration, which are some of my favorites. Their catalog also includes content on science, nature, history, technology, and lifestyle. Unlimited access starts at just $2.99 a month, and as a special offer just for you guys, you can get a 31-day free trial by following the link below and using the code SECONDTHOUGHT during signup. CuriosityStream is available on all sorts of platforms, including the web app, Roku, Android, Xbox One, Smart TVs, iOS, Chromecast, Amazon Fire, Kindle, and Apple TV. So wherever you are, you'll always have access to great, interesting content. Give CuriosityStream a shot and sign up for your 31-day free trial by visiting curiositystream.com secondthought and using the code secondthought.